Well, I'll get started. Um, thanks again for taking time to be with me here today. Today, we're going to go through the positioning part. You know, this is where the rubber hits the road here, so to speak. So what I'm going to cover is we're going to have a brief review of what we did yesterday. Specifically, I want to uh, show you the spreadsheet uh, because we're going to be making use of that today. And it's not entirely necessary. It just makes things use, uh, a little more easy. I have a hard time thinking of speed in terms of user units per millisecond. So that's what we're going to be using it for. I'm also going to be going through the AMC profile generator today. We'll look at that in menu 38. And then we're going to go through the motion sources, <coughs> excuse me, including speed, homing, absolute, and relative motion. And then we'll end up today with some tuning, yeah, looking at the AMC position control loop. So those are the things I'd like to go through today. And I'll begin with a little review from yesterday. Um, first things first. Uh, always commission the drive as if you're just going to be setting it up for speed or torque mode first. Most importantly, enter your motor data and your motor feedback data. Now, if you're using one of our motors, um, it comes with a motor installation manual in the box. Um, a lot of people tend to throw that out, but there's some interesting info in there specifically regarding how you decode the model number to determine what type of feedback device you have on that motor. And there's also connector pinouts too for wiring it. So your motor data, your feedback, uh, rotating auto tune. And uh, like I did yesterday, for optimal performance, you want to do a inertial test as well. Then after that, menu 3, parameter 73 should be on anytime you're using an absolute encoder. That's the absolute turns recovery parameter so that it powers up and displays the correct position. Menu 5, parameter 18 should be set to 12 kilohertz when using a permanent magnet motor. And menu 6, parameter 30, which is run, must be active when using the AMC. So those are some things that I touched on yesterday. And before we get to the profile generator, I want to point out my spreadsheet. So I'm going to open that now. All right. Does everybody see my spreadsheet OK? Hopefully. OK, good. Good deal. So here it is. And I'll just show you how it's used. Um, first thing you do is choose your application type. And what we did yesterday was we used rotational. Then you choose your distance units. And again, the AMC doesn't care about this. This is just for your reference. So I chose degrees. Now, this user unit multiplier, this is the uh, position or distance resolution you would like to use. How many decimal places? I, am, uh, I tend to use three, so that's what I did there. Then you come here and say, how many degrees are there per motor revolution? Well, we plug in 360 there. And then the spreadsheet updates to show you the facts. If there's a gearbox between the motor and the load, you'd enter the ratio there. And then you can check the math uh, right here. So there are 360,000 thousandths of a degree per user unit here, per motor revolution. So as I move down now, remember yesterday we talked about the turns counter, 357. If you change that to 12, this number will change. I'm sticking with 16. Then if you happen to have a repeating decimal situation um, where it doesn't come out all nice and neat like this does up here, here's where you add decimal places to compensate for um, the, the 
cumulative position error over time. Well, our numbers worked out for this example nice and neat, so I don't need to add anything else. And then lo and behold, here are your parameters, right? So um, if I go to connect here, right, and I look at menu 31, that's where the numbers came from. So the spreadsheet points out not only the correct value, but also where you put those values. So I, I find myself using this all the time. Mostly what we're going to do today is down here. So you enter your motor max speed in RPM. I, I'm using a 3000 RPM motor. And then the spreadsheet will automatically calculate the maximum motor speed in AMC units, which is user units per millisecond. So 18,000 you use per millisecond is equivalent to 3000 RPM given the distance units that we plug in up here. So for example, if I want the motor to go 100 RPM, I'll put that there, and it converts to the AMC speed in user units per millisecond, which is 600. Now if I want a one second X cell and a one second D cell, this is in terms of milliseconds, so that's a thousand, and that's a thousand. So here's my values for menu 38 that we're going to be looking at now. So again, this, this spreadsheet is, is pretty handy. I'd recommend that you use it as a reference until you get comfortable uh, with working with this stuff. Okay. So, having said that, let's have a little closer look at menu 38, which is the profile generator. Another thing too, this graphic that you see here, this comes right out of the connect help file for menu 38. So, if you have connect open and you have the help tab open, you can see this same diagram. And this is a schematic view of how menu 38 works. So menu 38 is the profile generator. So here is where we're going to take the AMC profile input position, which is menu 38 parameter six. And we are going to run it through the profile acceleration, deceleration, and maximum speed. Now I should point out that maximum speed here is only used when you're doing positioning, relative or absolute. The first thing I'm going to look at today is the speed source, which is jogging. That speed reference is found in menu 34. All right, so this speed is only used for acceleration and deceleration. Oh, I'm sorry, for profiling, excuse me. And then from there, we get a profile output speed, and then it goes through the integ integrators to create the profile output position and the output acceleration. So here's menu 38, and as I touched on yesterday, it's a single motion profiler. Some of you may or may not have been familiar with our old school, older motion controller, the Epsilon drive and power tools software well that software there allowed you to set up motion profiles individually each one had its own axle d cell and speed well that's not the case with the amc so the takeaway here is if i'm doing positioning anytime i want to update the axle d cell or speed i need to update menu 38 first. So this is what we're going to be doing. Now the units, what are the units for speed, XL, and D cell? Speed is taken in terms of user units per millisecond. 
So the speed will be here on the y-axis. And then X cell and D cell are in terms of user units per millisecond squared. So while you use are a little unusual term, at least they're engineering units. So I don't have to convert from, you know, degrees per minute or RPM and time. They're already in engineering terms. So, <laughs> excuse me, calculating these terms um, becomes easier. Now back to menu 38. Menu 38, if I flip back to menu 38, let me show, show you that. And I'll open menu 38 now. So here's my Axel D cell and speed that I just covered. But down here, we have jerk. All right. So this is often referred to as S curve. But in our case, we refer to it as jerk, which is the appropriate engineering unit. So let me go back to the presentation now. So jerk is a rate of change of acceleration. So acceleration is a rate of change of speed. Jerk is a rate of change of acceleration. Using jerk is very beneficial specifically in those cases where you have fragile mechanical components. Um, when I was doing machine design, it never occurred to me that uh, ball screws, for example, have a critical speed. Um, gearboxes require oil, things like that. So jerk can be really handy and it makes life easier on the power transmission components, including belts and pulleys too, for that matter. So jerk also reduces the negative influence of mechanical backlash. If you've got a sloppy mechanical system and you require accurate positioning um, and there's backlash involved, you know, from gearing, stretch belts, whatever, uh, jerk will help to reduce that. So to use jerk, there's four different parameters involved. Menu 38, parameter 11, 12, 13, and 14. And again, here's a diagram that shows uh, the effect. And the reason there's four terms is because if you look at a typical trapezoidal profile up here, here is the first change in acceleration. So that's 3811 shows here. Here's another change in acceleration when we transition from acceleration to steady state speed. So that's menu 38 parameter 12. Then we have the transition from steady speed to deceleration. That's 3813 here. And then finally, between deceleration and coming to rest right there. That's 3814. So you can employ individual jerk terms for each one of these if you want, or you can use the same term for all four of them. So to use a single value that's going to be applied to all four segments, what you do is you simply put your, your term into menu 38 parameter 11 and leave the others at zero. If you want the same amount of jerk applied to the other three, you just put your desired term in 3811. That's what most people do. Um, if you want to have a, a value for just Axel and D cell, which is the initial acceleration and then the transition from steady state steady state to decel you can put those two terms in 
if you'd like them to be different, and, and maybe you do. And finally, uh, you can just put your own value for all four if you want. So let me see here. Let me turn this around. Does anybody have any questions on that? Does that make any sense at all? Hopefully. All right. So I'm going to show an example here. Um, using jerk. This is CT scope and this is what the trace looks like after jerk has been employed. So I'm going to set up my AMC now using these parameters. I'm going to set 3803 to 3000 you use per millisecond and then 3801 is 3 right that's one second again the engineering terms rise over run in 3811, I'm going to put a value for jerk into 0 0.03 user units per millisecond cubed. The smaller the value for jerk, the more pronounced the S or the curve will be. So let me start with connect. And I will switch over here. Okay, so what I want here is this becomes 3,000. And what did I say? Acceleration becomes 3 for X cell and D cell. 3, 3. Okay, so now that I've got that, let's go back to the jerk. So I want this to be 0 0.03. I'm just going to use a single. And here's what I was telling you about. Here's the help that shows those graphics. So that's 0 0.03 right there. Okay, well, let's see what we can do here. going to go into now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up um, let's see here that's 3000 I'm going to open up connect now I'm sorry CT scope We looked at this yesterday. So there's CT scope. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll start it. And now I'm going to run the motor. And let's see what we get. Right. So you'll see, instead of a straight linear, I have a nice little rounded curve there. Right. So if I move, pan this over, you can see it a little better. So there is a slight amount of jerk employed there. And if I were to make that value in 3811, or 10, I should say, or now it's 11, if I were to make that smaller, this would become more pronounced. Does that make sense? Anybody? Good. Okay. Okay. Yes. Each parameter is assigned to each section of the profile. So 3801 is there, 2 is there, 3 is there, 4 is there. 
Correct. Yep. Any other questions? We all right? Okay. <laughs> now the last parameter in menu 38 is the profile update mode. And there are two choices, one or zero. One is default. One limits a change to the profiler parameters, Axel, D cell, and speed can only be made when the profile is idle, when the profiler is idle. So in other words, I'm not able to update the Axel, D cell, and speed while the profile is in operation. If I wanted to update the Axel, D cell, and speed while the profile is running, I would change 3815 to zero instead. So depending on your application, um, there's a lot of opportunity to use this option, honestly. Um, analog positioning, for example, where you want the position of the motor to be determined by a joystick. Um, you know, you might set the speed Axel D cell to be the same, but if you want it to be updated while it's running, you want to make sure that you set that to zero. So mine is left at one, um, which is you know, most useful for positioning applications. All right, here we go. The first source we're going to look at to make the motor go round and round is speed. So to put the AMC into jog or speed mode, all you do is change 3407 to a 2 if you're sending the parameter over a field bus or directly into connect. You just choose speed. So again, the speed reference for speed mode is in menu 34, but the AX cell and D cell are in menu 38. So that's a, got to remember that. Update the speed in 34, but the AX cell and D cell are in 38. So here's where I'm going to be using the custom list that um, was available for download. Um, I'm going to be using this now to run the AMC. So let me switch back to connect and I'll show you how to integrate that. Let me go to connect. Let's do this. Okay. All right, so here we are in connect. So I'm going to come over here. There's my custom list folder right there. So if I wanted to build my own, a new custom list, I would do that. But what I want to do is import the one that I sent you. So, or the one that you could download if you did. To do that, you right click on custom list and then choose add files. So I have a custom list um, folder in my documents. And there it is. AMC custom list, open. So here it is. Now to use it, you double click. I'm online, of course. Don't forget to do that if you have a demo. These custom lists just make it a lot easier. Instead of having 37 tabs open up on here, you can just group whatever you're going to use into a custom list like I did here. So here's my speed reference for speed mode right here. And I've got the Axel D cell set at one second still. 
So if I want to run now, I've gone up here and I've turned on my drive enable. My run signal, menu six parameter 30 is on. So the only thing I need to do now is change this from stop to speed. I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to tell if the motor is running, but <coughs> excuse me, it is in fact running. And if I look at my keypad, I wanted 500 RPM and uh, by golly, I have 500 RPM. So that means that our user unit calculations were correct. And if I want to stop it, I just change from speed to stop. There we go. So that's speed mode, jog mode as a source. Any questions on that? OK, good. All right, well, now what we're going to do Oh, there's my custom list. So I did this, right? I just did this. I didn't change to 100 RPM, but using the spreadsheet, that's easy. All right, so that just had some instructions for what I just got done doing. Now, before we start doing positioning, there is something in menu 39 that I need to point out. And that is the profiler limits. I'm going to be going through the whole thing at the end today. But there's two things that we need to set up prior to really prior to doing anything with the AMC. So that is menu 39 parameter 9, which is the position control loop clamp. This is the maximum speed used to correct for following error. And then parameter 30, menu 39, parameter 11 is the absolute output speed clamp. This is your uh, speed limit. So as a rule, you would want 3909 to be about 10% of your desired profile speed. So let me switch over to connect now. Here, here we go. All right, and I will open menu 39, which is right there. So 3909 is right there. Now, what I did here is I did not follow my own recommendation. I, I set it to the maximum speed. I wanted to use as much speed as possible to correct for following error. So that's where 18,000, if you'll remember my spreadsheet, 18,000 UUs per millisecond is the same thing as 3,000 RPM. Why would I set that to something less? Well, somebody, you know, well, I'll just give an example. If you're trying to use, for example, a belt and pulley or a belt driven actuator, something that's compliant, and might stretch. If this speed is too high, you could end up with oscillation where the position controller is trying, trying to correct for following error, but due to the mechanical compliance of the load, it's just not able to settle into the correct place. So that would be a, a, an effect of having this number be too large. This one, 3911, unless you want to purposely limit the motor speed to something less than its maximum speed, then you would change this to something less. Um, I don't know, there's, there's probably instances where you do want to do that. I'm not a fan of putting limits in the drive. 
Um, I think limits belong in the HMI or PLC uh, with appropriate warnings for the operator. Hey, you can't run faster than this. So that's why I set these up to their maximums here. So that's menu 39, and we'll be coming back to this later today. All right. So okay, we just did all that. That's speed mode example. So we we just did that. So the next source I want to look at is homing. All right, now homing. A home profile is used to establish the physical position that will become the reference for position registration. So homing is required anytime there is mechanical constraints that when they're exceeded could damage mechanical components of the machinery, right? So a linear style application. Uh, somebody mentioned that they are using an XLAR actuator. There is an example of wh why and when homing is very important. You can use uh, homing with rotary applications like I'm doing here today also, um, as well as sheet feeders or nip rollers or things like that. You know, there's no chance of smashing into anything with a nip roller or a sheet feeder, but you, you might want to zero out the motor position at, at some point. Now, a little word about absolute encoders. Absolute encoders only power up and report where their position counter is at that time, right? So an absolute encoder, encoder has its own counter internal to the encoder. So when it powers up and the drive reads it, it's reading where the encoder is, not necessarily where the actuator is. So that's an important point to keep in mind. The AMC supports 11 different homing modes, all right? And the home mode is chosen using menu 40, parameter two. So menu 40, parameter two, <coughs> excuse me, here's the homing sequencer, menu 40, parameter two. And these things that you see here in diamond shape, these are read only. Right, so obviously a selector switch is a parameter I can adjust. So these are all the elements uh, that are relative to home. So uh, we're, I'm going to be demonstrating some of these. I'm not gonna go through all 11 of them, but um, to initiate the home, you know, once you've chosen the mode you change 3407, the AMC reference selector, to home. Now, depending on the homing routine, which one of the 11 you're using, it can include up to three different homing phases. Phase one is home to a switch. Now, if you'll recall yesterday, I set up the home sensor to be on terminal 25 on the drive that I'm using. So when I'm using one of the home modes that requires looking for the home sensor, it's gonna complete home one. Now home phase two, this is kind of a Euro term, freeze. What does freeze mean? Freeze is position capture and I'm, I'm gonna be demonstrating this at some, I think I am, but freeze is position freeze, position capture. So as part of your home, you can capture the current motor position. In fact, the first one I'm going to demonstrate does this. And then phase three is the home offset. So if you, in a classic sense, if you're homing to a home sensor, the home position will be on the leading edge of the home sensor. 
if you want to move it off of the home sensor away somewhere, you would include a home offset distance. So once the sensor has been detected, the motor is decelerated, the home final home position will be after phase three has been completed. So again, which one of these three uh, is used is determined by what you put for the home mode in 4002. Now there's a special kind of home. If I put 4002 to minus one, that is a home in place which means that none of these are used. When I set the home mode to minus one, it's going to take wherever the motor is, and that's now home. So that would be a good one to use for uh, on your sheet feeder, your nip roller, for example, right? Because there's, it's just a, whatever it is, it's just a roller. So home mode minus one. However, if I change to, five home mode to five that's a home to a switch or a home to a sensor phase one will be executed and if there's an offset position phase three will be executed so these determined are determined by what you have in menu 40 parameter two for your home mode so here's a classic actuator here right so we would have a home sensor maybe on this end and then a over travel sensor down there and then there's the carriage which is moving the tooling back and forth so i'm going to demonstrate uh, two of these three <laughs> um, the demo i have i wanted to show you home to torque and i will show you what to do but the demo i have has a cover over the motor so i can't grab the motor shaft and stop it but I'll, I'll show you exactly what you need to do if you want to do that. This is, um, this is a pretty popular home here. Uh, we do a lot of work with extruders. And I don't know if you've ever seen a plastic ex extruder, but a lot of times the um, injector is contained inside the extruder itself and it's heated up to some ungodly temperature and it's a very short stroke, so there's no room for sensors, including a home sensor. So my experience has been people use the home to torque to just back it up to a hard stop and say, okay, that's where zero is. So to see all 11 options explained in English, um, we have an app note that I created called AMC Homing, which you can download from our website. That explains in detail how to utilize the homes that I'm not going to show you. But um, I, I'd highly recommend that you do download that because it's, it's very descriptive and it, they all work. They've all been tested. They all work. So the first one I'll look at is home in place. Again, um, this home, wherever I'm at, that's where home is. So. All I need to do now is I'm going to go to my, uh, go back to connect and look at my custom list and we'll try this. Okay. So before I run anything here, I'm going to go look at menu 40, which is the homing system. So inside here, here's the home mode. There's the home speed. The home speed is not the profile speed in menu 38, nor is it the speed mode speed in menu 34. So the home speed is set here. The home position in UUs is also set here. Most of the time, it will be zero, whatever, but it doesn't have to be. You, this will become the absolute reference position. So if I go back to my presentation again, and I back it up one here, 
right? So normally I'd run this back and hit a sensor and okay, that's zero millimeters, inches, whatever. But what if I want to operate on either side? What if I want my home position to be in the middle here? Well, what I do in that case is I would home it to the sensor. I would put an offset that would move the tooling carriage to the middle. And then the home position would be referenced as half of my travel distance. So if this were 24 inches, right? I'd say, okay, the home position is 12 inches. It's right here. If I wanted to go to zero inches, it would go this way. If I wanted to go to four inches, it would go this way. If I wanted to go to 16 inches, it would go that way. Because this is 12 inches now, right in the middle. So that would be an example of where you know, home is normally zero, but it certainly doesn't have to be. Okay, let's try. Let's try this. So I'm going to go down here. Home mode. Well, I'm not going to move the motor right now. I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say home mode minus one. And what I want you to look at is right there. That's the motor position in you use, okay? So I'm gonna change my home mode to minus one, like that. I don't need speed because the motor's not gonna move. Then I'll come up here to the reference selector and choose home. Okay, notice two things. First of all, it automatically goes back to stop, which is a good thing. You don't want to leave it in home. So now it's bouncing on or around at 359.999 and zero. So I've got some dither there. So again, um, we'll talk about tuning later today too, but that's a home in place. To set the home mode to minus one, and then change the reference to home, and away you go. Any questions on that? All right. Okay. Home in place. The next thing we'll do is use the home switch, right? And this is just a screen capture from um, CT scope. So I'm gonna use mode eight. And what's gonna happen here when my home is initiated, which is right here, it's going to go counterclockwise to the speed that I set, which I'll have to do it's going to move until such time that the leading edge of the sensor comes on, which is right there. At that point, it will decelerate following the ramp that I've programmed. But see this here? This is the, since I don't have a home offset, I set home offset to zero. That means I want home to be as close to the leading edge of my home sensor as possible. So that the motor will reverse, which is in this case is a positive motion. It's going to reverse and it's going to cover the distance that I lost during deceleration right there because my sensor is right here. So it decels and then it makes up for that distance lost with this profile here. So let's see how that works. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to connect. Okay, let's put you in there. All right, now let's see. 
I am going to change my home mode to eight, which is going to rotate counterclockwise. I'm going to leave my home at zero. Now my home offset, I'm not doing an offset here, so I'm going to leave that at zero for the time being. Negative limit, where am I here? There it is, home maximum speed. I'm going to set that to the same jog speed we had, which was 3000. There we go. So now I'm going to try to run my home. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to change 3407 to home. Now that's, yeah, that's too fast. So I'm going to change my home speed to about a third of that. Okay, and I'm going to put the Axel D cell. Oops, change speed in the wrong spot there. So I changed my home XLD cell, but my home speed now is going to be here. There it is. All right, let's try homing again. That's better. So now it's going to move until the home sensor comes on, which is right here, terminal 25. See it decelerate, and then make up for the decel distance. And there's my home position again. So that is, and notice also, that the reference selector automatically reverts to stop when the home is completed. Does anybody have any questions on that? Well, I'm either explaining this really well or nobody, nobody's talking. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, that's why I'm recording all this, right? It's a lot to take in in two hours, but uh, you'll be able. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Well, before we carry on here, well, actually, let's just carry on. All right. So that's home to sensor. And I chose mode eight, which will move the motor counterclockwise as viewed from the motor face, by the way. If I wanted to go the other way, I would put the home mode to five, and that will do the same thing but it'll move it in a positive direction instead. Then if I wanted an offset, I would plug that in into menu 40 parameter seven. So that's kind of your classic home. Um, the first home to sensor, I mean the first one, home in place, um, between that and this one, that covers probably 80% of the applications. But I do want to show you this, this is kind of a nice feature too. And that's home to a hard stop. Now again, I'm, I've got the wrong demo to grab the motor shaft and show you how this works. But at least I've got the uh, CT scope trace there for you to look at. So this mode works for applications that don't permit the use of a physical sensor. So to operate this, to operate the home to torque, you begin by setting the home mode to two if you want the motor to rotate initially clockwise, or three if you want it to rotate initially counterclockwise. So in my screen grab here, I use mode three counterclockwise. You set the desired torque level in percentage into menu 40 parameter 18. Right, so the torque level is in terms of the rated torque for the drive and motor combination you're using in percent. Right, I should probably show you that. So 
So let me go look at that. I don't, yeah, I do. There it is. Menu 40, parameter 18, heart stop, torque, threshold, and percent. All right. So that's what I'm referring to. And I'm also going to be using home hard, uh, home hard stop delay time in seconds. So let me flip back here. So you set the torque level and 4018, and now the delay time. And what that means is, you see in this graphic, I'm starting my home. Well, the level is met right there. But what the delay means that I have to have, I have to exceed that level for that amount of time. So this part here, that is the delay time combined with the D cell distance. So meet the level, delay, decelerate, and then here, here again, is the uh, reverse direction to try to get back to exactly that point in time where that torque level was met. So that's, that's pretty, pretty useful as well. And uh, I guess I'm kind of surprised there's a lot of people that use this. And just as a side note, you can also include a move to the encoder marker if your encoder has one after torque level and delay time are met. So that application note that I referred to, which is available for download from our website, will cover this uh, in a little more detail. All right. Before we go to positioning, let's take a 10 minute break. Does anybody have any questions? All right, well, let's take 10 minutes and I'll pick up again at 1010, okay? All right, well, let's carry on. Um, the next thing uh, we're gonna look at yeah, is positioning. So when it comes to motion profiles, there are two types of profiles uh, used that are associated with positioning. And those two types are trapezoidal and triangular. Trapezoidal profiles are your traditional one-third, one-third, one-third. And they are used um, when there is sufficient time and distance to accelerate the speed, run at speed for a distance, and then decelerate. <coughs> Excuse me. The second would be a triangular profile. And these are typically used with high speed, short duration moves. And a triangular profile would consist of half acceleration and half deceleration. So hopefully you've heard of those terms before. So as an example of a trapezoid, I want to move 360 degrees in three seconds. So <laughs> laid out graphically here, one motor revolution is 360 degrees. The fundamental equation that the AMC uses is right there, V equal DT. So my example move, I want to move one rev, which is 360 degrees in three seconds. So that's a rate of 0.33 revolutions per second. I want to accelerate, which is velocity over time. I want to go, I'm going to be running at 0.33 revs per second in one second. So my acceleration is 0.33 and my deceleration is also 0.33. So one, one third, one third, one third, right there. And these are just in engineering terms, but they're not in AMC terms. So to convert to AMC units, same profile, 360 degrees in three seconds, one motor revolution now, 
according to the scaling that we set up yesterday, is 360,000 UUs. So our velocity is one rev in three seconds, which is 0.33 revs per second. Multiply that times the distance for one rev, and I end up with 119,880 UUs <coughs> excuse me, per second. To get to milliseconds, I divide that by 1,000 milliseconds per second. So the equivalent speed becomes 119.88 UUs per millisecond. To get acceleration and deceleration, again, velocity over time, 119.88 UUs per millisecond divided by 3 seconds is 39.960 UUs per millisecond per millisecond. So I'm going to plug those in, right? So let's go in and try this now. The first thing we'll try is a relative motion, relative positioning. We'll position the motor by an incremental distance away from wherever the motor currently is. So the incremental distance for this motion is programmed into menu 34, parameter 6. So to execute a relative motion profile, here's the settings I'm going to use from the previous slide. So let me switch back to connect now. Okay, and we'll go here. All right. So there is my position reference right there. So this is menu 34, parameter 3. So I want that to be 360,000, or one motor revolution. Says I. Hmm. Well, that's odd. Let's see what's going on here. Online, okay. Yep. Wow. What's going on here? Hmm. Okay. Make sure we're all set up and enabled here. Yep. Yep. Oh, I had a. That's that's why. I've got a rollover limit from yesterday. All right. So let me get rid of that. All right. Now, back to our regular scheduled programming. Okay. That's better. Okay, so let me flip back and my speed is going to be 119.88. So 3803, right there. I'm using this speed now. And there are two decimal places for resolution for speed, for my profile speed. And now my acceleration and decel are 39.96. that 
there. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put connect up on the screen. I'm, I'm sorry, CT scope up on the screen. And then I'm going to run this profile so you can see. So there's CT scope. Now I'm going to run the profile. And to do that, all I'm going to do is change 3407 from stop to position rel, relative. So there's my profile, right? So I said I wanted to do that in three seconds. One rev in three seconds. So let's use the cursors and see how close we came here. Put that one there. Put that one there. And you can see that's three seconds. The period there will, is the delta between the cursors. So that's about three seconds. So the calculations were correct for the, <coughs> excuse me, for the trapezoidal move. All right. So using these, using the method that I used to calculate this, I probably should have put it in the spreadsheet now that I think about it. But here's a reference. Um, and, I, and I acknowledge that working in terms of UUs and milliseconds is not intuitive. But I've, with some practice and um, hopefully reference to this presentation, you'll be able to see how that, grasp how that goes together. So when you're exit, go ahead. Sure. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. No, it's because I don't have my position. It's, it's a function of the, uh, that's, I'm looking at speed there. So that's a function of my speed loop gains right there. And it's also my position loop gains, too. So if I go back um, and look at that, right? So if you look here, that looks like a terrible amount of dither. But if you look, that's only plus or minus. That's not even one rev. You know, here's my speed, 20 to 21. So it's plus or minus a half rev per, or UU per millisecond. So that's, that's not terrible, but you know, what I'm more concerned with is the overshoot down here. You know, that's, it's not bad. I can bring this in uh, a little better if I wanted to crank up my, uh, my uh, I term in the speed loop. Right. You know, that's exactly right, too. I mean, and then my motor's not loaded much either. Um, yeah. So now if you were running a process, um, web coding, for example, where speed is vital, yeah, I'd, I'd have to do something about that. But for positioning, um, that's not terrible. As long as I get to where I need to, I'm good. Any other questions? All right. Now, ideally, you can unmute yourselves, right? Brandon? There you go. Right, so, right. OK. So <clears throat> the thing with relative position profiles 
is you must return the AMC reference selector back to stop before repeating a relative motion profile. So here is where the host controller of some sort comes into play, right? So if I want to do uh, repeated relative motions in between those motions, I need to come to stop first. And I don't know if you noticed that, but I'll go back to connect to show you. Let me get this up here. You notice that my reference selector didn't re automatically revert back to stop. It stayed in position relative. Well, why would you do that? Well, again, getting back to there are applications where people want to update things on the fly. So that's why it doesn't return back to stop. So if I want to do this again, I'll go to stop, then I'll execute it again. And there we go. But if I want, you know, we're certainly not going to have anybody sitting there flipping this on and off. So your host controller, be it the MCI 200, 210, or a, a traditional PLC over a field bus, is going to have to shift this back to stop after the move is completed. Well, that's another question in and of itself. How do I know when the move is finished? Ideally, you'd be able to use one of the parameters in menu 41, the profile complete flag, right? Well, it's on, but if I were to include that as part of a logic sequence in my controller, when I wanted to start a move again, if it's looking at this, it's gonna say, well, I'm already done. What am I going to do now? How about this one? Movement complete flag. Well, that's on too. So what I do here, there is a profile complete window, by the way, plus or minus this value that it is used to turn this on. But that doesn't help me when I want to restart again. So, or when I want to shift back to stop. So what I do is in my logic in my host controller I'll set up my own watch window I, I don't use these I'll, I'll take a snapshot of where I'm at at the beginning of the move I'll add my distance and then I'll say okay if I'm within plus or minus this amount of my target then I'm done so I'll, I, I use my own watch window um, to sequence and I'll be de demonstrating that in the next class, which will be Machine Control Studio. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. But that's an important uh, point there to, to bring out for sequencing. OK. So next thing, triangular moves. So now, again, not enough time or distance to get up to speed, run, and decel. Now I want to go 90 degrees and 100 milliseconds. When you're doing a triangle, you, I'm going to introduce the concept of an average velocity here. So you have an average velocity and a maximum or peak velocity. And the reason I'm doing that is to calculate the area under this curve, triangle. So again, the average velocity is distance over time. So I want to go a quarter of a rev, which is 90 degrees, in a half second. So that's a rate of 0 0.5 revs per second for the average. To get the correct profile, I have to calculate the max, which is twice the average. So I'm going to shoot for a target speed of 1 revolutions per second since it's all axel and D cell. The axel D cell then becomes the max velocity divided by the total time. So the total time here is 100 milliseconds, so the axel D cell 
is one rev per second divided by 50 milliseconds. So that's 20 revs per second per second for your XL D-cell terms here. So that's the math behind calculating a triangular profile. Again, to convert this to you use 90 degrees and 100 milliseconds. Well, one rev is 360,000 you use in, in our case. So the average velocity here is 2.5 revs per second. 2.5 revs per second times 360,000 you use per rev is 900,000 user units per second for a velocity. 900,000 UUs per second divided by 1,000 milliseconds per second makes an average velocity of 900 UUs per millisecond. Well, remember, I need to shoot for the max velocity here, which is twice that. So the max velocity now is 1,800 user units per millisecond, just twice that. The Axel D cell is max velocity divided by half of the total time. So Axel D cell becomes max velocity divided by 50 milliseconds. So that becomes 36,000 UUs per millisecond per millisecond. Right, so let's try this one. I'll flip back over to connect. Again. All right. So my position reference becomes 90,000, 90 degrees, 90.000 90 degrees. My speed, my speed is 1800. So that is 3803. And then my acceleration D cell is 36,000. So 3801. Thirty-eight oh two, okay, well, let's fire up CT scope and see what that looks like. I'll start it, and I'll go back to my reference selector. Notice that I am not touching the switches on the demo stand. Run is always on. So I'll come here now, and I'll go position relative. Now if I can get back here quick enough. There you go. So let's see how we did. Yep. So that's a triangular profile. Trapezoid triangle. Why do I care? Well, in order to position accurately, the last thing you want to do is leave it up to the controller to decide, oh gosh, I should start decelerating here. Well, nope, I overshot. So that's why I go through the uh, exercise of showing you the equations behind the profiles. You don't want to leave anything to chance if you want good results. Okay. Go back to the presentation again. There we go. All right. 
So the last thing we'll do is absolute positioning. So rather than move incrementally from the current motor position, an absolute profile will move the position specified by 3406 AMC position reference. So absolute position is referenced from the position used for the home position. So I said home was zero. Again, it doesn't need to be. So if the home offset position is used, if menu 40 parameter 7 is greater than 0, then absolute profiles will be referenced from whatever that physical position is. Absolute profiles use the same parameters as relative profiles. So your speed XL D cell in 38, your position in 34. All right. So I'm going to execute a home profile first, uh, just, just to show you. I'll, I'll do a home, and then I'll do my uh, relative move that I just did, and then I'll do an absolute move. All right, so here we go. Um, oh, actually, I'm going to do this. I'll move to 270 degrees. So let me go back to connect. So here, I'm going to put the position to 270 point zero 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 degrees. But I'm going to do a home first. So I'm going to change my home mode to minus 1. And then I'll execute my home and watch. That'll be reflected here. So now I'm dancing on or around zero. So there's my target, 270. Let's see what my speed was. So 660 and 60 for Axel D cell. So all that becomes 60. This becomes 60. This becomes 600. Does it? Yes. OK. So now I'm going to make that move. So notice I'm on or around 0. So now I'll change to position absolute to start this move. There. So now. You see, I'm at roughly 270.000 UUs. Now, if I try to run that again, it's not going to move because I'm already there. You know, that's how absolute motions work. I'm at that point. If I want to move to the absolute 10 degree position, that's 10, one, two, three, zeros. There we are. So that's moving in absolute terms. And just like before, if you want to repeat an absolute motion, you have to go through stop. Now I'm going to give you an example. But absolute works a little different, or a little better than relative here. If I leave it in position absolute mode, right? And I come up here, and I just change the position reference. It's just going to go there without any user intervention. Like that. So when I refer to using a joystick for motion, um, one of our OEMs does massive uh, vents for HVAC, really large 
uh, fans, and, and they've got a, a, a fan, what do you want to call it, the restrictor plate that restricts airflow. So what they do is they use a joystick or they use an analog from the PLC, and they just leave it in position mode. They use a scaling linear scale block in Machine Control Studio, set up their min-max positions, and then they just feed an analog reference and the motor moves those vanes to wherever they need to be without changing 3407. So bear in mind that when it comes to sequencing, if you leave it in position mode, and you change the mode, it's going to go there. So that is positioning. Does anybody have any questions? Right. Yeah. And then again, it, it, it does come down to the whatever you're using for a sequencer. You, you always want to make sure that you return to stop. You know, and, it, and that might sound like, oh, okay, well, that's not a big deal. Well, in fact, it is. I mean, because I'm sitting here with the motor shaft not connected to anything I can destroy. But, uh, you know, if, if you're moving theater pieces around, and heaven forbid there's somebody writing on those, <laughs> You know, you don't want to do that. Yeah, I never turn it off. I never turn the AMC off because that would also cause a problem because the run signal is on. You know what I mean? Then you'd have a whole different kind of run. Or whatever, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and now the MCH is nothing but a dumb touchscreen, right? It has no logic in it. Well, no, it doesn't. But yeah, in a, in a machine control studio um, is where I would take care of all this stuff, including the run signal. Yep. What I what I wouldn't do is just arbitrarily assign run to a switch like I did here. I would use Machine Control Studio to control the status of the run signal too. So, and I'll of course be demonstrating all that stuff. All right. So we have rotary mode also, right? So when 3403 is greater than zero, the AMC will position the motor. It's still an absolute position as defined in menu 34, parameter 6. However, setting 3403 will determine the path the AMC will utilize to achieve that position. I just turned off the rollover, which is in menu 31, parameter 10. But if you're going to use one of these rotary modes, you should definitely set 3110 to be a rollover point. So the motion is executed using position absolute. So the three different modes, mode zero is shortest path, mode one is forced clockwise, well, there's more than there's seven modes actually, two is forced counterclockwise, three is no rollover, it prevents the motor from crossing the AMC roller, it'll never get to that point. Four is multiple turns forward from its negative position references and has the same effect as mode one in that it forces clockwise rotation even though I have a negative position reference. Multiple turns negative is just the opposite of mode four, not five. And then mode six permits signed position references and does not force direction. 
So that's a lot, but the ones that are most commonly used are this one, this one, and this one. So that's set up in menu 34, parameter 5 for rotary modes. The last thing we'll look at today is position control loop in menu 39. So here's the schematic view of menu 39, and there's a lot to take in here, but again, I find these views pretty helpful. They're really helpful for troubleshooting. These are referred, these are block diagrams in Connect software, would show you a live version of all of this. So essentially, menu 39 is going to be used to eliminate position error by the gain settings, the proportional gain term that you use, and any feed forward that, that you may also be using. So the AMC utilizes a PI, proportional and integral position control loop, to minimize position error. And like I said yesterday, it should not be assumed that the AMC is plug and play. Yes, you can get okay performance without adjusting gains, but if your performance is critical, then you'll need to adjust the gains. Right, so the auto-tune tunes the, tunes the current loop again, but does nothing for speed, and we took care of that with the inertia measurement test yesterday. So the last part of the servo system that remains is this position loop. So just a, a, a rundown, uh, menu 39 parameter 1, if you had a controller that was calculating the uh, profile itself, you would turn 3901 on. And that bypasses the AMC profile generator in menu 38. So when this is enabled, the profile position, speed, and axle may be written directly to parameter 3902, 3, and 14, right here. Right, so if you have something else that's calculating the trajectory for you, then you could turn this on and write your data down here, or actually down here. Sorry. So that would be typically used with a PLC or a control module. This is handy too. Menu 39 per parameter 5 is inertia compensation mode. So if you've done motion, you know inertia can be your friend or your enemy, depending on how you have sized the system. Um, in terms of its torque capacity. So inertia compensation is only effective if you've already done the inertia test or you've directly entered the load inertia, which is also um, a possibility with most 3D CAD programs these days. You, know, you can calculate the inertia of the mechanical components and just plug it in. Otherwise, you can do the auto-tune like we did. So there's two modes here. Mode 1 adds a speed feed forward acceleration to your term, and mode 2 adds a torque feed forward gain term. Both of them have the effect of making the position loop more responsive. And again, you know, the classic servo loop, you have the current, you have the servo system, you have the current on the inner loop, the current loop feeds the speed loop the speed loop feeds, or actually comes in from the outside. P position feeds speed, speed feeds torque. So to make it more responsive, you can turn on uh, one of this inertia compensation mode. Here, it's not going to have much effect. But if your inertia mismatch load to motor is greater than 10 to 1, which is my rule of thumb, you will get, you'll get a lot of benefit by employing 3905. So this is what I did earlier today. 3909 is the position control loop speed clamp. I leave it maxed out, but if you have a highly compliant mechanical system, 
you may want to adjust that. And what do you adjust it to? You adjust it to the point where your motor works like it should. There isn't really any rule of thumb for that. And then 3911 is the maximum speed. So outside the AMC, there is a parameter in menu zero or menu one, which is the maximum reference clamp. Generally, you want them to match. In other words, menu zero, parameter two, if that's set to 3000, you'd want to put the same thing here. Unless, of course, you wanted to limit the motor speed when you're using the AMC, in which case you would reduce this. So position loop tuning here, there's a proportional term, right? So it's the KP gain, which is menu 39, parameter 7. The units are in user units per second per user unit. So this is completely iterative. I mean, that's you're just going to have to adjust this until you're satisfied with the performance. So what I do, and I'll just give you an example quick here. Right, so actually what I'll do is I'll show you CT scope. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a profile. And we will put this, I'll make it two revs. Two revs. Uh, let's see, that's too slow. All right, let's see how that looks. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start CT scope now and let's see what we can do. Okay, I'm going to run my motion now. Well, if I go back to, you know, that looks pretty good. I mean, I don't have any overshoot. You know, that's, I guess, a not a very good example for, <laughs> for tuning. But yeah, hopefully you get the picture. I'll, I'll go and change the uh, position uh, term in menu 39 now, and we'll do the same thing and see what happens. All right, there it is. I'm going to jack it up. It's By default, it's uh, 25. I'll double it. And then I'll run the same move again. Not much difference. Again, you need to have a, a load, you know, a, a bigger load to, to actually see, but the position um, proportional term has a dramatic effect on how closely uh, we can, uh, eliminating following error, position error. That's what we're trying to do. So, well, That's all I have for you today. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> yeah, I'm, 
next week I'm, I'm getting all the videos organized edited and then I will put them on our uh, learning center and they'll be out there next week Tomorrow we're going to talk about gearing and camming, and then uh, after, next month I'll be going over a machine control studio. All right. Anybody else? Rajiv, why is it that I can't believe it? How does how does that happen? Hmm. Well, okay. If there are no further, oh, here, we you're welcome. See you guys tomorrow. Have a yep.